Hello there everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at the tax relief on interest payments for buy to let landlords on their mortgages. Now this is going to be the first in a series of videos I'm going to do on this topic but this first video today basically explains how you um, calculate relief for interest on your personal tax return. So let's just assume we've got uh, two individuals here, right? One of them is on salary, they're employed, and one of them uh, has their own business and they pay themselves through a combination of salary and dividends. I'm going to show you how the differences are in calculating the relief on the interest element of their mortgages. So first of all, let's just look at some figures. So assume that both of these guys have got one buy to let. The annual rents is £7,000 from this one buy to let. Okay, very good. Then expenses, excluding the mortgage. Let's just say it's a couple of grand a year, £2,000. Repairs, insurance, whatever it is, £2,000. Then mortgage interest. Interest rates been climbing, unfortunately. So let's say it's £4,000. So quite a big proportion in regards to um, uh, the rent and everything else. So the economic profit that they make, £1,000 a year. Assuming, assuming that it's, it's uh, interest-only mortgage. Now, as we know, you can only claim the interest element of a repayment mortgage, just the interest that you could potentially claim. But just assume in this instance, the mortgage is an interest only mortgage. So their economic profit is a thousand pounds, seven less two less four. However, since 2017, there has been restrictions on claiming this bit here, the 4,000 of interest expense on the buy to let mortgage, there's been restrictions, which I'm gonna talk through. So first and foremost, a lot of misinformation since the government changed the rules, a lot of people think carte blanche, you can't even claim any tax relief for this 4,000. So strictly that's not entirely true. You can still get some tax relief somehow, which I'm gonna show you, it's just not as generous as it was pre-2017. But that's the first thing. It's amazing how many people I speak to and they say, oh look, I've got this four grand of interest, forget it, I can't do anything with it and just ignore it. Well, that's not true. Yes, you can. It can still save you a few quid in your tax. So, let's dive into Mr. A, who is the guy who is an employee. So, he's got a salary. He's got 75,000 a year. He's on a, on a, uh, he's got a employment. He works for someone else. 75 grand is his salary. And his property profits, 5,000 pounds. So, this is the first thing. When working out the tax on this profit, we ignore, for the first part, the interest expense of 4,000. So I've already said he's made a grand economic profit, but for the purpose of where it goes in the tax computation, you add it back and you say, really, the profit pre-interest expense is seven less two, which is five, okay? So we put that on his tax return, 75 grand salary, five grand, property profits, he's got total income of 80,000. And then uh, the tax on that, well, of course, he's going to have some at zero and some at 20% and some at 40%. Works out that he pays tax of 19,432. Now, this at this stage is where relief for this interest expense on the buy-to-let property comes in. Doesn't it comes in down here. It's what we call a tax reducer. So basically, you ignore it up to this point, work out your tax bill, and then do something with it to knock a few quid off your tax bill right at the bottom. This is how it works now. Whereas in the past, it used to just come off this property profit here. So that £1,000 of economic profit would end up here no longer. So he's paid some higher rate tax. 40% on the, the property profits, but now he's getting some, some benefit. And it's 20%, 20%, okay, of the mortgage amount. So what was the mortgage amount? It was 4,000 pounds. 4,000 pounds at 20% is a straight 800 quid. Just comes right off his, his tax bill. Yes, this guy's employed, so he's probably got PAYE to knock off Hopefully most of that, but 
essentially that's how it's worked out. It's a tax reducer at 20%. So in the good old days, you'd get 40% relief. Now he's getting 20% relief, okay? So that's better than nothing. Like I said, a lot of people don't even know about that. They, don't, they didn't even think that you get anything, but you can. Let's make it a little bit complicated with guy number two, Mr. B, if you want to call him. So this guy uh, has his own business. He's got a limited company making widgets and he pays himself the same amount, 75 grand, but via a different way. The reason I'm showing you this is because of the change of how that interest relief works in this second scenario. So this guy pays himself a salary of 10,000 pounds, gets his uh, uh, credit for, for state pension at that level, and the balance made up of dividends from his own company. So 10,000 salary, uh, 65,000 dividend from his business, that's his 75,000 matching what this guy has on the salary. Plus, remember, he's got the same buy-to-let proposition as the other guy. He's making property profits of 5,000 pre-mortgage interest. Right, so how is this guy gonna be taxed? So, again, he's got total income of 80,000, but his, his income tax bill is a lot less. It's about 13 and a half grand, uh, plays 19,000 over here, uh, largely due to the fact that uh, the better rates of tax for dividends. But that's not really what I'm doing the video to, to tell you the, the pros and cons of having a company. It's this next bit I'm focusing on, which is following it through, like with the previous case, what is the amount that's knocked off the bottom line of his tax due to the interest on his buy-to-let mortgage? Well, you might say, Simon, you've already told us it's 20% of four grand. But actually, it's not. It's... 2,430 at 20%, not 4,000, 2,430. And you think, hang on a minute, what the hell's the, everything's the same, they're both earning 80 grand, they've both got exactly the same property profits, how can the interest relief on the mortgage be less for the guy whose income profile is this compared to the guy whose income profile is that? And they're both earning 75 grand before the, uh, you add on the property profits. Well, I'm going to tell you because, strictly speaking, the rules are a little bit more complicated than just saying, take the interest element of your buy-to-let and times by 20% and knock it off the bottom line. It's a little bit more complicated. What are the rules? Well, it's this. You take the lower of two things. Firstly, the property profits. Now, in this case... Property profits, £5,000. We've already established that. This figure here on the tax return, five grand. Great. But it's the lower of two things. So what's the second thing? The second thing is total income, excluding dividends, that exceeds the personal allowance. Oh, God, all right. What's well, a bit of a bit of a mouthful. So what the hell does that mean? So the total income, just follow it through. Total income, 80000 We've been banging on about the fact these guys are both on the same. Eighty grand. Total income, including the property profits, less 65,000 for this guy because it says excludes dividends when you work in this calculation now. So 80,000 minus 65,000 is 15,000. And then the second part of strand two of the rules is that amount in excess of the personal allowance. So the personal allowance, 12,570. So his total income, excluding dividends, that exceeds the personal allowance is 15,000 less 12,570, which is 2,430. So his interest relief is curtailed to an amount of 2,430 at 20%. Unlike his pal over here who's employed, still has the same 75 grand, but he gets the full whack, 4,000 at 20%, whereas this guy his restriction is curtailed, and that's just the rule. So I think a lot of people have no idea <laughs> about that, that it's the lower of those two things. Like I said, uh, there's a significant amount of people don't even know you can get any relief, full stop. Those that are in the know, yes, they know that you can get this 20% reducer, used to be 40% in the good old days, but at least you're kind of getting half, you know, what you used to. 
but I would suggest <laughs> many, many people don't know that strictly, it's not as easy as just say, what is your interest times by 20%, you've got to do this lower off. Now, tax returns, if you're filling them in, will work this out, but you need to be aware of it so that it's not a great surprise when you, if you are, you know, doing your own tax return, say, and you go, hang on a minute, I, well, I, I, thought, I thought you could get point. No, because them's the rules. It is restricted to 20%, restricted even more on what can be applied to that 20%, depending on the makeup, the composition of your, of your income. So there you go. So just an overview there on the, um, the rules on claiming interest deduction on your personal tax return if you are an individual that owns a buy-to-let property and you've got a mortgage. These are the things that you've got to know about. So, like I said, uh, video number one, a whole series I'm going to do on interest uh, relief because um, there's lots more to talk about. This is how it's basically the, the mechanism for giving the relief. Um, but basically there's, there's a whole other uh, series of things to talk about and I'll do those on the subsequent videos. So if you like this video, please do subscribe and as always, I'll see you soon.